In this lecture, I'd like to teach you about peripheral arterial disease. Specifically, I'd like to go over the definition, the incidence, the risk factors, and how we diagnose this disease, and then after this, how we treat it endovascularly. What is peripheral arterial disease? Peripheral arterial disease is atherosclerosis, or occlusive disease of the arteries of the lower extremities and branch vessels of the aorta. Peripheral arterial disease most commonly refers to atherosclerosis within the legs. What is atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis, as the name implies, is the process by which deposits of fatty substances, cholesterol, and cellular waste products, as well as calcium, build up along the inner lining of an artery. A normal artery allows blood to flow in order to, perf to perfuse the appropriate tissues. When fatty deposits build up, and atherosclerosis forms, the artery becomes diseased and therefore limits the flow of blood. Atherosclerosis is a systemic disease which can lead to ischemic stroke, myocardial infarction, and finally peripheral arterial disease. Symptoms of this disease manifest in terms of critical limb ischemia, rest pain, gangrene, or necrosis. How common is PAD? Well, it turns out that up to one in four Americans have some form of cardiovascular disease. That means over 70 million Americans are affected. PAD affects 12 to 20 percent of Americans age 65 and older. There's a significant overlap of atherosclerotic disease and in fact patients with this process approximately 38 percent will have overlap in two vascular beds either coronary artery disease and or cerebrovascular disease and or peripheral arterial disease. Most patients with this disease are asymptomatic. Approximately two-thirds or 66 percent will have no obvious symptoms of PAD. And approximately 34 percent the disease will be symptomatic. The other thing to remember is that the disease will tend to get worse as a patient ages. In fact, 10 percent of those older than 70 years old will suffer from lifestyle limiting claudication, meaning they will have symptoms of pain with walking. The other thing to remember about PAD is that the mortality can be relatively high over a five-year period and compared to other more common forms of cancer the mortality from PAD can reach up to 44 percent in some patients. What are some risks that make me more prone to having PAD? There are several risk factors for PAD. Having diabetes, being older than age 50, having a history of smoking, and being overweight. The other risk factor is a family history of peripheral arterial disease or atherosclerosis, as it is generally recognized that there is a genetic component as well. What are the symptoms of PAD? Well, these symptoms can be categorized as being mild or severe. The mild symptoms uh, include pain with walking, otherwise known as claudication, and this pain typically is relieved with rest. There may be nonspecific symptoms of aching, weakness, or numbness in the extremities. When symptoms become more severe, the pain uh, increases, and there may be the development of non-healing wounds or ulcers, and ultimately this can lead to tissue loss or gangrene. How do you diagnose PAD? We start off with a thorough history and physical. We ask relevant questions re with regards to pain in the extremities and how this is precipitated. Is the pain made worse by walking? Is it relieved when you stop walking? Do you have any sores or ulcers on your feet? Do you have any pain at night? And are things getting worse? We then do a thorough examination of the pulses and also examine the skin for any color changes or any signs of tissue loss. After this, we then perform diagnostic tests. Most commonly, we start off with the ankle brachial index which compares the blood pressure uh, between the arms as a ratio to the pressure in the legs. And then if we need to, we go ahead and perform a CT or MR angiogram. And then finally, if we need to perform intervention, then we will also obtain a conventional angiogram at the time of the procedure. This is an example of the ankle brachial index, and this is how it's performed. On the left is a very sensitive Doppler ultrasound machine, which can detect very uh, faint pulses. And this is a schematic showing the blood pressure cuff placed on the arm and also on the legs. These pressures are then measured and the ratio is then 
developed and calculated. And this is the diagram showing pressures obtained in the bilateral upper extremities and how then they are compared to the pressures at the ankles. What is considered to be the normal ABI? The normal ankle brachial index is approximately 0.9 to 1.0. And you can see from this uh, diagram that as disease becomes more severe, the ankle brachial index uh, decreases and in the most severe form it is less than or equal to 0.4. Again, as a reminder, the significance of detecting peripheral arterial disease is that the severity does correlate with mortality. And the more severe the, uh, the changes of peripheral arterial disease, the lower the ankle brachial index and the higher there is a correlation to increase mortality. Are there any treatments for PAD that do not involve surgery? Well, for mild or moderate PAD, medical treatment is what we like to do first, and this involves medications such as cholesterol-lowering drugs, otherwise known as statins. We also combine them with antiplatelet medications, which include aspirin and Plavix. The other thing that we do medically is risk factor modification. In other words, we look for uh, areas that can be improved, such as the cessation of smoking, um, controlling diabetes, and also to control a person's weight. And then finally, uh, we also encourage exercise or walking program for those who have mild to moderate disease, because oftentimes um, these patients will respond to such treatment. If medical treatment is not enough, or if the disease is even more severe, then we can offer endovascular therapy. And then finally, if endovascular therapy is not an option, then we can refer the patient for an open surgical bypass. Now next, I would like to uh, teach you about balloon angioplasty, stents, thrombolysis, and atherectomy. What is angioplasty? In this schematic, you can see a very low profile balloon crossing an area of atherosclerosis. The balloon is then inflated to perform angioplasty, which is otherwise known as remodeling of the interior lining of the blood vessel. This is an example of a cryoplasty balloon, which also simultaneously freezes the intimal lining in order to minimize restenosis. In this example, there is a complete occlusion of the distal superficial femoral artery down to the popliteal artery. This patient was very symptomatic and they were treated with angioplasty. And in this picture, you see a low profile balloon being inserted and then inflated across the stenotic area. At this point, a stent was also placed to treat the lesion. On the final angiogram, you see contrast passing very easily now through the superficial femoral artery into the popliteal artery. What is a stent and how is it used during my treatment? A stent is an expandable tube or mesh tube made of metal, which when placed in the disease artery, improves the flow of blood. In this diagram, you see an example of a balloon expandable stent on the left, which is mounted on the balloon, and then the balloon is inflated to simultaneously perform the angioplasty and then leave, leaves the stent behind. On the right is an example of a self-expanding stent, otherwise known as a nitinol stent. This is made out of a special nickel titanium metal alloy, which has a thermal memory and will expand to a specified diameter within the blood vessel. This is another example of a balloon expandable stent, as you see here, and this is another example of a self-expanding nitinol stent. This is a case of a 68 year old with severe right leg pain with walking. And you can see from this angiogram that although there is nice passage of contrast or blood down the left leg, there's relatively no flow through the right leg. Following endovascular treatment with angioplasty and stent placement, you can see that there is now flow of contrast and blood down the right leg to perfuse the right lower extremity. What is thrombolysis? The other intervention that can be performed is thrombolysis, or dissolving of blood clots. Oftentimes, in cases of severe peripheral arterial lesions, there is associated clot which can be treated with the injection of TPA or thrombolytic agent. These catheters are specially designed 
to infuse the TPA to the desired location. What is an atherectomy? In this diagram, this is an example of atherectomy where we actually can shave the inside of the plaque free from the vessel wall. This example shows an atherectomy catheter which contains a carbide cutting tip and a blade which spins at approximately 8,000 revolutions per minute in order to shave the plaque from inside the vessel wall. This is an example of an 80-year-old male who complained of left leg pain with walking. He has a very high-grade stenosis along the external iliac artery as seen here. This patient was treated using an atherectomy device. Following the treatment, you can see that contrast now passes easily across the prior stenosis and this is able to perfuse his leg much more effectively. What are the goals of treatment for PAD? The goals of treatment of PAD are to improve symptoms and quality of life. We also would like to prevent the sequelae of untreated or undertreated atherosclerotic disease in order to prevent tissue loss and to lower the risk of amputation. Where can I have this procedure done at? This is the Advanced Medicine Center at Stanford Medical Center which is the base of operations for the interventional radiology section. In this building we have state-of-the-art imaging using C-arms and also we have the capability of Dyna-CT technology and we can perform CTA reconstructions in addition to real-time live fluoroscopy. Who should I call if I'd like to schedule an appointment? If you would like to schedule a clinic visit, you may contact the schedulers within interventional radiology at this phone number, and we look forward to uh, seeing you in our clinic. Thank you.